Hi guys, Danny Walker here and I want to talk about sarcoidosis today. I talk about it a lot on my blog at dannywalker.com because my husband was diagnosed with sarcoidosis in 2004 and we're celebrating this May 2012, three years in remission without any medical treatment. Um, we've been able to do a lot of this through diet and nutrition and lifestyle changes, which again I talk about a lot on my blog, um, for people with all kinds of different autoimmune diseases. But last night I was researching telomeres. And I was actually researching Parkinson's disease because there's a lot of research, you know, that's an age-related disease, as most of them are, uh, on telomere lengthening and the fact that people with these neurological disorders and things like that have shorter telomeres than people who don't have these diseases. And I was reading about Parkinson's and telomeres and the connection there, and down at the very bottom of the page was this study I'm going to read to you right here about sarcoidosis and telomeres. And I never even considered doing any research on that until I, of course, as soon as I saw the word sarcoidosis, I had to click on it and read it because I'm all about uh, how we can help prevent disease and how we can help people with diseases like sarcoidosis overcome them naturally through diet, and nutrition, and lifestyle changes like my husband has. Um, so anyway, age-related alterations of subtelomeric methylation in sarcoidosis patients. Lots of big words. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I have learned a lot of uh, a lot of the lingo and I, what I do with abstracts and clinical studies off PubMed, so on and so forth. Is I read the the beginning and I read the end and uh, find out what they're really saying. So, in this study, though, it talks about uh, let's see here the sarcoidosis patients revealed shorter telomeres and a faster attrition of telomere shortening in comparison to healthy controls. Thus, they're aging quicker and their telomeres are shorter than people like you and I who aren't suffering with sarcoidosis. And at the, the final sentence here says that this also means that the subtelomeric hypo, hyper, hypomethylation can also be influenced by certain disease conditions and that this may correspond to the accelerated telomere shortening and sarcoidosis. So having done some research on telomeres, what those are, every cell has a nucleus, every nucleus has many chromosomes, every chromosome has a telomere at the end of the, uh, the chromosome are these little tail tails called telomeres and every time our cells replicate and duplicate to, to keep us healthy and keep more bone and organs and tissues uh, growing every day, replenishing every day, those telomeres break off and a little bit, of, they shorten. Well, what this is saying is that people with sarcoidosis age much quicker, have much shorter telomeres than those who are healthy, those people who haven't been diagnosed with sarcoidosis. So there's a link there. Again, and just like the links I found on PubMed about oxidative stress, they have much higher oxidative stress levels than people who have not been diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Why? Why is this? And, but more importantly, what can we do about it? Because there's so many ways that we can help our body heal and stay healthy through nutrition. And now there's tons of science on astragalus and all kinds of Chinese herbs that help lengthen telomeres. And so I am really excited. I feel like this could be, I mean, this could be a huge blessing to so many people with sarcoidosis. And so I just invite you to go to my blog, invite you to reach out and contact us. We're real people with a real story about real success um, without the medical Western medicine uh, medications and pharmaceutical medications. So I wish you the very best day and look forward to hearing from you. Hope to Heal. This is Danny Walker signing out.